This is Notes in the Margin, a podcast for people who are super excited about writing their non-fiction book, but perhaps, just perhaps, aren't quite doing it. If you always feel called to tile the bathroom or clean the toilet instead of writing your book, you are in the right place. Your host, Vicky Quinn Fraser, has been there, done that, and has literally written the book about it. Join Vicky and her husband, Joe, as they make notes in the margin about creativity, writing techniques, publishing, and general shenanigans, and get tips and tricks to help you write your book. Hello, and welcome to the Notes in the Margin podcast with me, Vicky Quinn Fraser, and him, Joe Fraser. Yay! Thanks, Joe. Hello. <laughs> um, Joe is once again um, pouring into your ears from a glamorous car park somewhere in Aston. <laughs> it is super sexy. I'm just underneath the um, the M6, is it? M5? Yeah. M6, I think, is just over there. So if you hear loud bangs and crashes, it's probably a truck going past. Cool. It's very quiet, actually. Um, oh, okay. Joe is... Also um, wearing a very fetching high-vis vest and a paper hat on his head with a little peak that he's got a jaunty angle um, like a 90s wrapper. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of the benefits of working at the place I'm working at currently, where you get beautiful little paper hats to play with. It's great. Nice. I was going to ask you to name where you're working at, but you probably shouldn't do that. I probably shouldn't do that. No. <laughs> um, okay, so welcome to the podcast. We are going to be, um, today, we're going to be talking about three pieces of writing advice I hate. And I'm also going to be asking Joe what advice he hates, uh, which is the first he's heard about it. So that'll be fun. But before we do that, Joe, what are you reading right now? I'm reading Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky, who, uh, was, which is a book that was recommended to me by the fabulous Mr. B's Book Emporium. Um, yes. in Bath because you bought me a spa day which was amazing where I was fed cake and tea and a knowledgeable person went through the things I had read the things I hadn't read the things I enjoyed and the things I didn't and then provided me with a big stack of books and said these are the books you should read it's so uh, cool isn't it it's so cool very cool really good product really good gift idea um, no affiliation with them whatsoever but thoroughly enjoyed that yeah. really good fun yeah. Um, yeah, it was oh, it was one of my favorite things that was one of my favorite gifts that anyone has ever got me uh, was my reading spa. My cousin bought it for me and it was just mm. awesome. And so now I'm just like if I'm in doubt as to a gift to give to somebody, it's like reading spa. It's gonna be a reading spa at Mr. B's because it's just amazing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so. super cool. And I am reading, actually, I literally finished it last night. Um, I am I have just finished The City We Became by N.K. Jemison. And I'm pretty sure that I first found N.K. Jemison through my reading spa as well. All right. Cool. Yeah, and so I have voraciously um, mowed my way through most of what she's written. Um, and this one was about, um, it's about, well, it's about, cities and how they're alive and the avatars that um kind of pop up but it's, it's like a science fiction fantasy kind of uh, but it's also real social commentary on um the nature of new york city because that's where it's it's set it's new york um and it's just it's just very it's very good i love all of the i love everything about it and she's an amazing writer so uh, but what is your book about joe you didn't you didn't say um so my book is about a far distant future where the human race has been it's been terraforming planets for quite a while and meanwhile the human race has kind of gone nearly extinct um but there's all these terraforming processes happening all over the place one of which has resulted in civilizations that you wouldn't expect and the remnants of the human population are about to find one of these planets from legend from thousands of years ago that should be ready for them um but it's all gone a bit wrong yeah. and it, it's evolved it, it's evolved in directions that nobody was expecting that sounds cool um i will read it at some point because it's in our house now um and <laughs> interesting fact um did you know that terraform is one of the words that got added to the dictionary this year is it yes it is i'm really surprised it's only been added this year actually it feels like a word that oh. i've known for years yeah you'd think so wouldn't you because I guess from computer games and things for me, it was like 
the kind of some of the early computer games and but it's Civ 2 it talked about terraforming and yeah i don't know yeah and um, yeah, so, the, alien, the aliens movies were doing it all along weren't they they were terraforming yeah so only just um, been added to the dictionary so I guess with all of the kind of plans for Mars missions and things like that, it's become not so much science fiction as science possible fact at some point. So yeah, science, yeah, uh, working towards it. Yeah. So, so that's my fiction. Cool. Um, I'm, my non-fiction is um, reading Levels of Life by Julian Barnes, which is coincidentally a micro book. It's a little tiny book on um, on grief because he wrote it after his wife died. And it's just it's just amazing. And I I bought it because I read an excerpt from it as part of my master's degree um, and really loved the excerpt because it's he starts off with like a little treatise on the history of ballooning and it's it's like hot air balloons and stuff. And then the second part of it, so that's sky. And then the second part of it is ground and he, he kind of fictionalizes this romance between the actress Sarah Bernhardt and one of her fellow balloon enthusiasts and then the final part is um kind of six feet under I guess um and that's you know talking about death and, and grief but it's it's a beautiful little book he's he's a magnificent writer anyway and it's just fabulous it doesn't take very long to read and I can thoroughly recommend it as a fabulous example of a really interesting memoir and interesting use of juxtaposition which is a writing technique so um yeah Sounds um cool. it is cool so so yes that is what we're reading and um, what is going on at the dingle this week well wow. um we've got the floor down in the bathroom finally um yeah. so we need to do some kind of skirting boards and then we can just do things like plug a bath in and plug a toilet in and take a, a cabinet upstairs and put yeah. some sinks on it so we're we're it's it's dangerously close to being a bathroom. I think it really is. I think this weekend is gonna because I've um I found some um it's called Scotia. We can get some Scotia, which put you put across the expansion gaps at the edge of the floor. Okay. So, um, and it's much less expensive than the very expensive skirting board we cut into pieces before. So we'll see. Okay. Cool. I'll have cool. a look at it tonight. Uh, but also our taps have arrived today as well, so that's exciting. Nice. So we're gonna unpack all that later and have a look at it and um yeah maybe this weekend we'll have a recognizable bathroom that would be a thing wouldn't it would be a thing so anyway on to the subject of today's podcast which is three pieces of writing advice that i hate but before we go on to that <laughs> excuse me um joe have you ever received any advice that you've hated or that you thought was stupid oh god yeah, you warned me about this. Um, no, not really. Um, hang on. Uh, writing <laughs> advice that I've hated. So, not, I not, mean, I not, just, it... not, just, not just writing, any advice. Oh, well, I mean, I, I, work, I work in engineering, so I read a lot of technical documentation, and it's always terrible. It's always, like the other day, I was looking through documentation, and there was 900 pages of it, and <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't tell me the really obvious, simple thing that I needed to know, and it was just ridiculous. <laughs> it was like... It's just, it's just, I just need to know this one little thing and I can make it work from there. And it was, yeah, just 900 pages of nonsense. So um, I think not appreciating what your audience needs, I think, is a massive flaw. And I think, I think technical, technical writing is often very passive and very indirect and... and Impossible to read. Yeah. Impossible, yeah. And also, really if you... If you put 900 pages of anything in front of me, I am not going to read it. I'm going to set fire to it. I'm going to set fire well, to I mean, that I, pile of pages. <laughs> I, th I think it would more, more to be a reference document than a reading document, but uh, it referenced millions of things, none of which I needed to know. I mean, you should, which you seemed, should write to... Which seemed incredible. I know. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, okay, so three pieces of writing advice that I hate um, and what I do instead. And I just wanted to... Um, I just wanted to share these, really, because they're... They're pieces of advice that you find all over the internet, and I don't think they're very helpful for people um, anywhere ever. So, some of them are, but for me, I just don't like them. And I wanted to share them because um, I think there are other people like me out there. I'm not a special snowflake. So, um, yes. Okay, there's a bunch more writing advice I take issue with as well, but we're just going to go with these three today. Um, thing number one, write like you speak. is bandied around a lot 
Um, and it, like almost everything in life, needs a bit more nuance than that because you do not want me to write like I speak. Because if I wrote like I spoke, it would be in rambly circles filled with filler words and you wouldn't be able to understand it because it's really interesting. Have you ever noticed that if you read a, a direct transcript of um, an interview, it's almost impossible to follow. But if you listen to the interview, it's fine. Right. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. Next time I've, you're having... I've, I've not read many transcripts of interviews. Okay, well, in, try this then. Um, next time you are having a conversation or listening to a conversation, um, pay attention to how people talk and you'll see that they stop in the middle of sentences to talk about something vaguely related but and then circle back mm -hmm. and you know it's, it's, it's just the way that we talk and we can understand that perfectly well usually um unless it's unless it's a topic that is highly technical or you know something we're very unfamiliar with but if we're just having a conversation about say what to have for lunch or um you know anything else that's super familiar it doesn't it's not yeah, and I, that's a really good example of what I've just said there. That was like three or four little broken sentences. And yet you sure. can still understand what I'm talking about because, but if well, I were to write that down, it would be nonsense. Sure, sure. Too many diversions, too many parentheses, lots of little, yeah, tangents. Yeah. And very now, complicated reading. Very complicated reading. And that's not to say that you can't go off on tangents and um, do digressions in writing, because again, that's um, it's a writing technique, creative writing technique. And done well, it works brilliantly. But done as if it's done like this, if you just describe, transcribe what I'm doing right now, would not work at all. So, um, and this is like a bit of a, a bit of a shout out to my fellow ADHDers out there as well, because when we're asked to explain something sequentially and sensibly, I can't do it. It's like. I am a smart person who often sounds very not smart when I'm put on the spot to talk about something. <laughs> and so, but if if you ask me to write about it and put it down on paper, then I will be able to do that. I will be able to, um, I will be able to put down all the steps and it might come out as like step nine while I'm looking at step three and then I'll do step seven. But once it's down on paper, I can kind of rearrange it and, and make it so yeah. that it makes sense. Um, and so that, you know, I can be hard to follow when I'm, when I'm listening <laughs> and I annoy myself as well. Um, but yeah, so writing like you speak is not a very helpful way. It's not a very helpful piece of advice to give people because what the person actually means, the helpful advice person actually means is write informally and conversationally and not like you have a big old stick up your butt. Mm, sure. And there is a difference between the two. And I think that um, actually it takes quite a lot of practice to be able to do that well and to be able to, and it's not to say you know anyone can do it, but it does take a little bit of practice because if we just write like we speak, it can be very confusing and um, yeah, just, just not very effective really. So, so that's yeah. my first piece of advice that really annoys me. I think that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I wouldn't want to read Thanks. what you've just said. <laughs> no, not me. I don't even want to. I don't even want to listen to what I've just said. So if you just listen to that, then well done. <laughs> um, okay, so here is my second piece of writing advice that I really don't like. Um, kill all of your adjectives and adverbs and kill your darlings while we're at it. Um, and I don't like that piece of advice for a couple of reasons. So it's, it's a it's a really it's a really good. Um, example and did you see what I did there? You said really good. I did, which is um, and really is an adverb, um, <laughs> and it's a kind of lazy way of writing. You know, I, I always say to somebody, um, I do stand by the advice to remove the word very in most circumstances and find a better word to use. So if you're like, if you if you're saying I'm very cold, I'm freezing is a better way of doing it, and there are yes. even better ways than that. Um, you know, I'm very angry. I'm incandescent. I'm about to fucking explode. You know, those those are a lot more evocative and a lot more um, just interest, a lot more interesting. And they put more personality in. And you know, you can you can tell the difference between somebody who's a bit miffed and somebody who is literally about to start breaking things. Um, mm. And if you can bring that across in words, it's, it's much better. But if you kill all of the adjectives and adverbs in your writing, you are left with a technical manual, much like the one that you talked about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> and nobody wants to read a technical manual. You read them because you have to, because you have to find things out that sometimes don't exist in the technical manual. But nobody reads technical manuals for fun. I don't think. If you read technical manuals for fun, write in and tell me. I would be really interested to talk to you about that. <laughs> Fascinating. I've got a really good, if anybody out there wants to read like a 900 page technical manual on an obscure piece of technology, I'm, I'll send it to you. I really will. <laughs> That would be awesome. I can't imagine anyone's going to take you off on that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I, it's, it's not a very good idea to remove all of your adjectives and adverbs. Do not do that. Um, you can, there are better ways to say things sometimes. And sometimes an adverb really is the best way to emphasize something. And I did the same thing again there. It is not, you know, it's not, it's not a disgrace. It's not a sin to use the word really or very or exceedingly. Just don't do it very often. And don't it's 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 best used in conversation i think so it's like you know how sometimes you'll be like i'm really tired and you can stretch out the word and mm. you can do things with with that word on the page that will break all of the rules that your english teacher told you um and you know your english teacher would hate it but you can do that because it's your book and you can do whatever the hell you want with it so yeah don't think that you have to kill all of your adverbs and adjectives um if that's your style and it works and it's not boring because that's important, then you do you. Um, for adjectives, find funny ones and unusual ones and put ones together that you might not expect to use with, with a particular word. So like, I guess an easy example would be the word wicked, which used to mean evil. And then in the late 80s, early 90s came to mean super cool. It's like, oh, that's wicked, man, you know? Um, and so, you know, find an adjective that is a little bit unusual and that might not immediately you know, it might not be something that you would you would go for, obviously. And the kill your darlings advice, that is there's this idea that if you love something that you wrote, it somehow must not be good enough for the piece. And it's like, that might be true, but also it might not be true. <laughs> if you Wait, love it if, if, if you love it, it might not be good enough for the piece. Yeah, there's this idea that we get attached to a piece of writing just because it's a beautiful piece of writing or an interesting piece of writing. And I get it. I get where the advice comes from, because it's like you shouldn't hold on to something just because it's a beautiful piece of writing if it doesn't serve the purpose of the piece. Right. So that I understand. But I think some people kind of take it literally and, and they think that like I've seen people say, oh, I, I hate everything that I write. And I'm like, well, that's not good. You shouldn't hate everything that you write. That's not, you know, there's something gone wrong there somewhere. Um, and there's this idea that if you love what you've written and somehow that makes you arrogant or it means that actually it's what you've written isn't very good or that you're too attached to it or whatever. And, you know, all of those things might be true, but they're not necessarily true. And so I don't like it when people are like, kill all of your darlings. It's like, no, kill the ones that don't belong in your piece. And, and even mm -hmm. then, don't don't annihilate them. Just stick them in another folder somewhere because, you know, you might yeah. you might want to use them somewhere else. So, yeah, um, cool. yeah, fair. yeah. So that was, that was, that was another piece of writing advice that I, that I didn't really like. Um, so yes. And then my third piece of writing advice that I really hate, um, and this is very personal to me, it's bandied around so much and it's, it's productivity as well as, um, as well as writing is the advice to eat the frog first. And Mark Twain is responsible for this piece of advice because he was like, if you've got a bunch of stuff to do in a day, do the worst thing first and get it out of the way. And right. is that something that works for you? Oof, that's a tough question. Um, yeah, sometimes, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes I could, you know, I, I know I need to do my expenses and it's a really dull process and, and getting it done is is quite a nice thing to you know, put behind me. Yeah. So sometimes, yeah. So for me, that advice never works. Never, never has, never has. I doubt it ever will. Um, because if you if you put me in front of something that I really don't want to do and it's a really difficult thing to do and it's the biggest thing that I need to tackle that day and say, you can't do anything else till you've done this, that is the best way I know to get me to sit there and do absolutely fuck all all day. I will get <laughs> nothing done all day. And for so many years, I thought that I was so broken and that I was just a lazy, worthless piece of trash because this advice is productivity advice that is like shared by everybody and that everybody stands by and it's like oh this is the best thing ever just do this simply do this simple thing and your whole life will be changed and it's like it has never worked for me and it's really difficult when you're surrounded by people saying well just do this you know just yeah. make a list just have a schedule just do this and and it'll be fine and if it doesn't work then there's something wrong with you it's like now nah. 
And so I tried for years to do that and then wondered what was what was wrong with me. Um, and so here is what I have a thing to, to suggest for you. Instead, if you are also somebody who really struggles with this and who feels like shit because this foolproof activity and writing hack doesn't work for you and makes you feel like a failure, then um, try this instead. Do a fun thing first. Make the first thing you do in your day before you tackle the hard thing a fun thing. Do something that will flood your brain with dopamine. Um, so maybe like eat a cookie, dance, read for five minutes, play 20 minutes of lemmings on your phone, whatever you want. And then when your brain is good and dopamined up, do the no good, no fun thing quickly before your brain notices. <laughs> it's like <laughs> ride that dopamine wave all the way into lunchtime <laughs> and then do something else fun and be like, right, I've done a fun thing. And now I'm going to do the thing that I did not want to do. And then I'm going to do another fun thing. It is a fun sandwich. And I really love a fun sandwich. So if you are faced with a really horrible, boring job, and then you're like, oh, I'll have a reward afterwards. My brain goes, I'm an adult and I can have the reward now. And so I just, that's what I do all day. I just reward myself all day. And then I feel like shit. Um, but if my brain gets like a quick fun boost straight away, um, I can, I can kind of, <laughs> I can often I like to think of this as I've got all sorts of metaphors written down on my notes. I can yank the reins and steer it in the direction of the not fun thing before I notice and then get at least some of that not fun thing done um, rather than just playing oblivion literally all day. <laughs> <laughs> so I would really love um, for anyone listening to try that. If eat the frog has always made you feel like a broken failure, try my thing first, try the fun sandwich instead, because apart from anything else, it's a lot more fun. The clues in the name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you find that funny joke. Very, very I do. Funny. I like that one. I like that. Thank I like you. that because first, my first task in the morning is usually not hilariously fun. <laughs> is it getting uh, out of bed? Well, I mean, there's like, yeah, there's the getting out of bed and then there's the driving miles and then there's finding what somebody broke over the weekend and then there's figuring out <laughs> how you're going to fix that. And disaster. <laughs> What's up? I've just remembered, I don't even know if I should talk about this on the podcast, but I've just, I've just remembered the story you told me about the vision that you were faced with when you walked into the place that you happened to be working on one particular day. <laughs> I'm just surprised, I'm surprised this isn't etched into your brain. I mean, I have some strange mornings, but which one are you talking about? I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say anything. And then you can ask me when you get home and then we can share it next week if you give me permission. Oh, okay. So. Did it involve boundary workers taking off their clothes? No, 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 no. Not no. that one. Although, although you should probably tell that story at some point. No, this was really recent. Okay. Okay, well, it's fine. I have no idea what um, you're talking about. Yeah, this probably isn't good radio either. So. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, if you're, if you're listening to this podcast still, well done. Um, thanks. <laughs> thanks for sticking around. Um, I would love to know what's some common writing advice that you disagree with or that hasn't worked for you. Um, because it would be really cool. Like if you could email me vicky at moxiebooks.co.uk um, with any writing advice that hasn't worked for you or that has made you feel like crap. I would really be interested to know that because that's something that I can talk about on a future episode because one of the things that I do, because I work with so many different types of people, I have a lot of different tools in my writing coach toolbox. And if one thing doesn't work for somebody, I have three other things that I can try with them. So um, if you've heard writing advice um, that has just made you feel like crap or that doesn't work for you, send it to me. Um, we will break it apart and I will we'll put it back to, we'll put something else together. Um, um, my, 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 I'm, I'm going to submit one to, to the pile for starters, uh, Pomodoro. Oh, okay. Go on. Uh, just no. <laughs> just no. No. Just no. No, Why? thank you. Does not. Well, just doesn't, does it? It's just, it just, just means you feel shit in ten minutes' time instead of now. It's like <laughs> you're gonna. Okay, you're gonna have to use more words than that to explain. Well, well, okay, so the Pomodoro technique goes goes something along the lines of start a timer for ten minutes and do the thing. And by the time the timer runs out, your your Either you've either done the thing or you're deeply embroiled in doing the thing and making progress and therefore it's great and you can crack on and it's all brilliant. Um, but just do the set a timer and just do it for 10 minutes or 20 minutes, whatever it is, the, 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 the timer. So the Pomodoro is like supposed to be one of those tomato-shaped kitchen timer things, isn't it? That's that's yeah. the, the original the original one. Um, but it, it just doesn't, it, it, it doesn't work for me. It's like there's this, there's always too much prep to do the thing. 
Ooh. for me. So yeah, it's like, okay, so now I need this document and I need that. And I need some technology and I need to wire this thing up and I need to find a whole bunch of things out. And then the timer goes off and it's like, I haven't done anything yet. Blech. That's really interesting. So I would, okay, so there's a couple of different things there. And um, I would say that your thing is, <laughs> your thing is too big. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. You're not the first to say that. <laughs> Lol. Okay. Um, but like, a lot of people do this and I'm going to relate it back to writing. So that's what we're talking about here, but it's like, sure. oh, I'm going to, I'm going to write, I'm going to write chapter one. That's too big. That is too big yeah. a task to set yourself to do. And so I'm like a massive fan of breaking things down into their smallest possible component and like do something so tiny, you can't fail, you know, so tiny that you can't fail. And so what's the first thing that you can do? And this is why I like to, this is why I have so many lists partly. It's like, I'm going to break all of these things down. It's like, what do I need to do? I need to get all this research done. So for you, maybe it's gather different pieces of documentation and then maybe it's do some like wiry shit. I don't know, whatever. Um, and like, I will get my notebook, so I'll get my notes and then it'll be right. Now I'm going to set a timer and I'm going to make a plan based on that. So it's like, what is the smallest thing you can do? And I think that quite often Pomodoro, because it's, it's not the technique itself, because I actually find it helpful to say, well, I'm just going to do this thing for one minute. And sometimes 25, I think it's 25 minutes you're supposed to do it for, or 40 minutes. You can change, you can decide. But like even sometimes 10 minutes is too much. So it's like, I'm going to do this thing for one minute because I, you know, I, I can do anything for one minute except for a plank. Mm -hmm. That's horrible. Um, so I'm going to do this thing for one minute. And then that is a small thing. Sometimes 10 minutes is too much. So mm -hmm. Play, have a play around with it and have a have a look at how you're um how you're scheduling your stuff and how you're managing your tasks and you know breaking them down into things that you've got to do what do you have to do first what do you have to do before that what do you have to do before that because for me that's yeah. that's the way then my, my, my tasks are normally organized in an enormous pile that <laughs> is just heaped above me um slowly like drowning me and burying me alive that's that's how my my tasks are organized same Seems I don't know how we get anything done. Um, oh, no. And yet at home, you're super organised. I'm really not. I mean, well, I just cook always... dinner when I'm. I cook in dinner when I'm hungry. That's about that's about my level of organisation. You complain about the mayhem and mess that I cause. <laughs> no, that's just your. That's just your your problem with horizontal surfaces. That's fine. <laughs> Whatever. In the, um, the non-er allowed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so. That was my three pieces of writing advice that don't work for me slash I think are bad slash drive me up the wall. Um, so what is, what's today's takeaway? I haven't written one. Don't believe that every piece of advice that you read is for you. Yay, that's such a great piece of, that's such a great piece of advice, Joe. <laughs> Thanks, I just is, made that, it up. is that the only piece of advice that is actually universally applicable? Oh, but none of it is universally applicable, maybe. Yeah. Ooh, cool. Sounds a bit meta. Mm. It does. A bit like your sock thing. If your sock, sock is thing? inside out. Yeah, if your sock is inside out. <laughs> You're the only thing in the whole universe not wearing your sock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's, that's true, though. Come back next week for more deep thoughts with Joe. <laughs> that reminds me of deep thoughts with the deep off the boys. <laughs> yeah, good TV show. Um, right. Anyway, so yes, takeaway is not all not all advice is going to work for you, and that's okay. <laughs> don't, don't assume don't assume that all advice that you see written down or by some overly white toothed guru on the internet is you know if, if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't mean you're broken. It means maybe the advice is shit or maybe it doesn't work for you and that's fine. So, um, so yeah, speaking of breaking things down into tiny components and, um, making them as small as possible. Um, my micro book magic course is amazing. Um, and that's not just me saying that that's the people who are currently about to finish it and launch Yay. their micro books. Yay. Uh, congratulations folks. You're amazing. Um, I'm doing it again. I'm running it again on January the 10th. Um, and I really, really hope you will join us. Um, and if you keep an eye on my advent calendar over, um, over December, you will find lots of information about it. And you can email me, vicky at moxiebooks.co.uk. I may have a landing page for it at some point, although I haven't got around to that yet. Uh, but I will send you a link to the document with all the info in it. 
if you've listened to every Bye. episode email me um let me know i'll send you a silly gift and if you like this podcast what do they do joe they subscribe they write a review five stars uh yeah. they tell their friends yeah all that good stuff all that good stuff yay um cool right that's it thanks so much joe thank you harriet as always for being amazing thank you podfly for making us sound semi-professional and thank you to you dear listener for listening to this nonsense we'll be back next week talking about something else <laughs> <laughs> super organized as ever bye bye thanks so much for listening Check out the show notes at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast for links to everything we've mentioned in this episode. Remember to subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts from. And if you'd like to hear more from Notes in the Margin, you can sign up to get regular emails from Vicky into your inbox at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash notes in the margin. We'll be back same time next week. 